say this, but I am sorry for what happened this morning. Uh, is it member we of all joined. I apologize. No, there we, is a we, we all joined. It was a very, very sad. That none of us. There's no reason to. I mean, we are sitting here the whole day. Just yeah, nothing. And we apologize. We, we apologize, mothers, and I. I don't think that the bar should should transgress uh, the limits uh, of decorum, which is required, mothers. We take up seventy or eighty. Mothers, your lordships don't have to tell us. Your lordships don't have to tell us. It's and Mr. Sibyl, actually, for these eighty mentionings, and I say, all right, I'll give you a date in the evening. The staff and I sit through the evening. Yeah, they tell me know, every matter, sir, what has happened. Somebody no, no, it was the next Then they'll explain to me the date work, in the evening. The then day. I give dates in the evening uh, to all the. Uh, well, all I, the I just, well, I just wanted to say this on behalf of the bar. Yeah, we, we all joined, my lord. Thank we you. feel equally anguished by what happened. Equally anguished and hurt. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Call. Thank you, Mr. Sibyl. as promised to your lordships yesterday. I'll now, since my time is curtailed to 45 yes. minutes, I'll stick to four. I'll yes. stick to four judgments. What I've that done in the meantime is you got your note. I've got three things done. The timeline that I gave to your lordships yesterday. Yes. The timeline I gave to your lordships yesterday. I've got a note made. Yes. The judgments with propositions that I'm relying on. I've got a note made, and the distinguishing note on the judgments relied on. By the other side, I've got that note made. So let me just hand it over to your lodges. Your lodges permit that may be Excellent. easier and then proceed with my argument. Right. Uh, Mr. Courtmaster. This is my lodge, the list of cases we are relying on. Please give one copy to Mr. Sidbar. Suicide. Then is. Mr. Courtmaster, there are two more. Just state this. This is with the letter. <laughs> so why are you giving me the letter? No. Just two, three, three, four, five. My notes, these are the judgments we are distinguishing. I, the ones I am now handing over yes. are the judgments. Please give one, Mr. Stu, Mr. Sidbert. And lastly, what I am giving to your lordships is the timeline that I relied on, my lord, so that your lordships have in place that one place. You've given, you've circulated to Mr. Sibbert. Yes, yes, my lord, absolutely. Each of them, as I hand over to your lordships, I am giving to. And my lord, this timeline I have consciously not included the EC events because, as your lordship said, that's not something that your lordships are getting into. I pretty much stuck to about the first week of July and stopped to the first week of July as far as these lists oh. of events are concerned. So, my lord, these three things are done, and I have given now, my lords. Let me straight away come to the three or four cases that I need to cite, and that's it. Keep the PDF page But one argument, my lords, I just wanted to make before I go to the case law. Are my submission yesterday for your lordship's yes. kind consideration was that this is an artificial distinction sought to be drawn between a legislature party and political party. It has never been our case at all. In fact, we've right through said that it has the political authority of the political party. They are organically and integrally connected and they're co-joined and they have to be seen together. That's how the framers of the constitution always looked at it. And in fact, whenever an attempt is made to segregate, they say, no, we must look at both. Now that is further fortified if your lodges were to have para four of schedule 10, which is a defense. Of course, I'm not on the defense argument at all, because according to me, I have not incurred 21A or 21B, so I'm not on the defense at all. But please have that why they should be considered together and one has a bearing on the other, please have para 4 That's important point. of the 10 schedule. Para 4 of the 10 schedule. Yes, my love. May I, with your lordship's permission? Yes. 
a member of a house shall not be disqualified under sub paragraph 1 of paragraph 2 where his original political party merges with another political party and he claims that he and any other members of his original political party and please have two for the purposes of sub paragraph 1 of this paragraph the merger of the original political party of a member of the house shall be deemed to have taken place if and only if not less than two thirds of the members of the legislative party concerned have agreed to such merger. So even when you come to a defense, the bearing of what happens in a legislature party, in fact, they say it's deeming, it's a deeming fiction there as far as the defense of merger is concerned. I'm not for a minute suggesting I'm coming under para 4. I'm just drawing analogy from para 4. Yes. To say what bearing does the, the two have on each other. So when you come and say that this is only in the legislature party, nothing has happened in the, in the political party. Whereas even in Rana, which is one of the judgments I'll read out, when the defense was taken up of whether there is a split or not, the question was, should the split only in legislature party be seen or the split in political party be seen? Even there, the Supreme Court said, the speaker will not embark on an independent inquiry into whether there's a split in the political party. We'll just take a prima facie view. So they go hand in hand. And this whole argument that you're only the legislature party, not the political party, is a completely wrong argument in law and in facts. Now, my lord, straight away to the judgments kindly first have my lords balachand versus bs yadurappa just uh, judgment compilation 3d volume 3d pdf page 25. pdf page 25 Stop. starting at 58 don't want to rely upon notes Straight way you but straight because this is for all the judgments. I will now just four judgments I want to cite and would request your lodges to read with me because mm -hmm. that, that is important for that's judgment compilation volume volume three D volume three D judgment compilation PDF page fifty eight, which is the relevant para one one three. Page. Good. What para did you say? Compilation volume one one three. Volume on page PDF page. May I, with your lordship's permission? Yes. The main questions which emerge from submissions made on behalf of the respective parties and the facts of the case may be summarized as follows. <coughs> A. Did the appellants voluntarily give up their membership of the Bharatiya Janta Party? B. Since only three days time was given to the appellants to reply to the show cause notices as against the period of seven days or more prescribed in Rule 7 sub clause 3 of the disqualification rules, were the said notices vitiated? C. Did the speaker act in hot haste in disposing of the disqualification application filed by Shri B. S. Yadurappa, introducing a whiff of bias as to the procedure adopted. D. What is the scope of judicial review of an order passed by the Speaker under Para 21A of the 10th Schedule to the Constitution having regard to the provisions of Article 212 thereof? The facts of the case reveal that the appellant along with Shri MP Renuka Charya and Shri Narsimha Nayak uh, wrote identical letters to the governor on 6 10 2010 indicating that as MLAs of the Bharatiya Janata Party they had become disillusioned with the functioning of the government headed by Shri B.S. Yadurappa. According to them, there was widespread corruption, nepotism, favoritism, abuse of power, and misuse of government machinery in the functioning of the government headed by Chief Minister Shri Yadurappa, and that a situation had arisen when the governance of the state could not be carried on in accordance with the provisions of the constitution. Accordingly, they were withdrawing their support and from the uh, their support from the government, headed by Shri Yadurappa, with a request to the governor to intervene and to institute the constitutional process as the constitutional head of the state. 
The speaker took the view that the said letter and the conduct of the appellants in moving from Karnataka to Goa and other places and issuing statements both to the print and electronic media regarding withdrawal of support to the BJP government led by Sri Yadurappa and the further fact that the appellants are said to have negotiated with Sri H.D. Kumaraswamy, the leader of the state Janata Dal and its, and its members regarding the formation of an alternative government was sufficient to attract the provisions of Para 2 1A of the 10 schedule to the constitution. It was held by the speaker that in the absence of any denial to the allegations made by Sri K.S. Eswarappa, the state president of the BGP, the same had to be accepted as having been proved against the appellants. In this regard, the speaker referred to the views expressed by the constitution mentioned Kehoto Holohan, wherein one of the issues which had been raised and decided was the act of voluntarily giving up the membership of a political party may be either expressed or implied. Even greater emphasis was laid on the decision in Ravi S. Nayak, wherein it was observed that there was no provision in the 10th schedule which indicated that till a petition signed and verified in the manner laid down in the Civil Procedure Court for verification of pleadings was made to the Chairman or Speaker of the House, he did not get the jurisdiction to give the decision as to whether a member of the House had become subject to disqualification under Para 2-1A of the 10th schedule or not. The aforesaid view taken by the Speaker has to be tested in relation to the action of the members concerned of the House and it has to be seen whether on account of such action a presumption could have been drawn that they have voluntarily given up their membership of the BJP, thereby attracting the provisions of Para 2-1A of the 10th schedule. In the instant case, the appellants had in writing informed the governor on 6-10-2010 that having become disillusioned with the functioning of the governor uh, of the government, headed by Sri B.S. Yadurappa, they had chosen to withdraw support to the government headed by Sri B.S. Yadurappa and had requested the governor to intervene and institute the constitutional process as the constitutional head of the state. The said stand was re-emphasized in the replies to the show cause notices submitted by the appellants on 9-10-2010, wherein they had inter alia denied that their conduct had attracted the vice of defection within the scope of 2-1-A of the 10th schedule. In their, in their said replies, the appellants had categorically indicated that nowhere in the letter of 6-10-2010 had they indicated that they would not continue as members of the legislature party of the BJP. On the other hand, they had reiterated that they would continue to support the BJP and any government formed by the BJP headed by any leader other than Sri B.S. Yadurappa as the chief minister of the state. They had also reiterated that they would continue to support any government headed by a clean and efficient person who could provide good governance to the people of Karnataka according to the constitution of India and it was only to save the party and government and to ensure that the state was rid of a corrupt chief minister that the letter had been submitted to the governor on 6-10-2010. At this point, let us consider the contents of letter dated 6-10-2010 written by the appellants to the governor which has been reproduced herein before. The letter clearly indicates that the author thereof who had been erected as an MLA on a Janta Bharatiya Janta Party ticket having become disillusioned with the functioning of the government headed by Sri B.S. Yadurappa on account of the widespread corruption, nepotism, favoritism, abuse of power and misuse of government machinery, was convinced that a situation had arisen in which the governance of the state could not be carried on in accordance with the provisions of the constitution and Sri Yadurappa had forfeited the confidence of the people. The letter further indicates that it was in the interest of the state and the people of Karnataka that the author was expressing his lack of confidence in the government headed by Sri Yadurappa and that he was accordingly withdrawing his support to the government headed by Sri Yadurappa with a request to the governor to intervene and institute the constitutional process as the constitutional head of the state. Although Mr. Sorabji was at pains to point out that the language used in the letter was similar to the language used in Article 356 of the constitution, which according to him was an invitation to the governor to take action in accordance with the said article, the same is not as explicit as Mr. Sorabji would have, would have us believe. The constitutional process as hinted at in the said letter did not necessarily mean the constitutional process of proclamation of president's rule, but could also mean the process of removal of the chief minister through constitutional means. On account thereof, the Bharatiya Janata Party was not necessarily deprived of a further opportunity of forming a government after a change in leadership of the legislature party. In fact, the same is evident from the reply given by Appellant 9 a uh, uh, reply given by the appellants on 9-10-2010 in reply to the show cause notices issued to them in which they had re-emphasized their position that they not only continued to be members of the Bharatiya Janata Party but would also support any government formed by the Bharatiya Janata Party headed by any leader other than Sri B.S. Yadurappa as the chief minister of the state. 
the conclusion arrived at by the speaker does not find support from the contents of the said letter of 6 10 2010 so as to empower the speaker to take such a drastic step as to remove the appellant from the membership of the house now kindly have my lords para 142 page 64 <clears throat> My lords have para 142. Yes. On the very same day, that is 6 10 2010, Sri Yodarappa, as the leader of the Bharatiya Janta Party, uh, Bharatiya Janta Legislature Party, in the Legislative Assembly, filed an application before the Speaker under Rule 6 of the Disqualification Rules 1986, being Disqualification Application Number 1 of 2010, for a declaration that all the 13 MLAs elected on BJP tickets, along with two other MLAs, had incurred disqualification in view of the 10th Schedule of the Constitution. Immediately thereafter, on 7 10 2010, the Speaker issued show cause notices to the aforesaid MLAs, informing them of the disqualification application filed by Sri B.S. Yadurappa and informing them that by submitting letters to the Governor, withdrawing support to the government led by Sri Yadurappa, they had violated Para 21A of the 10th Schedule to the Constitution and were therefore disqualified from continuing as members of the House. The appellants were given time till 5 p.m. on 10 10 2010 to submit their objections, if any, to the said application. Even if, as held by this court in Dr. Man, uh, Mahachandra Prasad Singh, Rule 6 and 7 of disqualification rules are taken as directory and not mandatory, the appellants were still required to be given a proper opportunity of meeting the allegations mentioned in the show cause notices. The fact that the appellants had not been served with notices directly, but at the same were pasted on the outer doors of their quarters in the MLA complex, and that too without copies of various documents relied upon by Mr. Yadurappa, giving them three days' time to file the said notice uh, to the said uh, to file reply to the said notices, justify the appellant's intention that they had not been given sufficient time to give an effective reply to the show cause notices. The please have then para 147 on page PDF 66. 147. May I, my lords? Yes. The procedure adopted by the speaker seems to indicate that he was trying to meet the time schedule set by the governor for the trial of the strength in the assembly and to ensure that the appellants and the other independent MLAs stood disqualified prior to the date on which the floor test was to be held. Having concluded the hearing on 10 10 2010 by 5 pm, the speaker passed a detailed order in which various judgments, both of the Indian courts and foreign courts, and principles of law from various authorities were referred to on the same day, holding that appellants had voluntarily given up the membership of the Bharatiya Janta Party by their acts and conduct, which attracted the provisions of Para 21A of the 10th Schedule of the Constitution, where under they stood disqualified. The vote of confidence took place on 11 10 2010, in which the disqualified members could not participate, and in their absence, Sri B.S. Yadurappa was able to prove his majority in the House. Unless it was to ensure that the trust vote did not go against the Chief Minister, there was no conceivable reason for the Speaker to have taken up disqualification application in such a great hurry. Although in Dr. Mahachandra Prashad Singh, this court held that the disqualification rules were only directory and not mandatory, and that violation thereof amounted to only procedural irregularities and not violation of a constitutional mandate. It was also observed in Ravi S. Nayak that such an irregularity should not be such so as to prejudice any authority who is affected adversely by such breach. In the instant case, it was a matter of survival as far as the appellants were concerned. In such circumstances, they deserved a better opportunity of meeting the allegations made against them, particularly when except for the newspaper cuttings said to have been filed by Sri Yadurappa, along with the disqualification application, there was no other evidence at all available against the appellants. As 67. Then please have uh, para 151 at PDF uh, page 67. This is important. To also on the same page. Yes. Yes. Well, it's para 152. We cannot lose sight of the fact that although the same allegations as were made against the appellant Sri uh, Yadurappa were also made against Sri uh, MP Renukacharya and Sri Narsimha Nayak, their retraction was accepted by the Speaker despite their views expressed 
by them submitting that upon submitting the letter withdrawing support to the bjp government led by shri yadurappa all the mlas stood immediately disqualified under para 21a of the 10 schedule to the constitution and they were accordingly permitted to participate in the confidence vote for reasons which are not required to be spelled out then para 154 having considered all the different aspects of the matter and having examined the various questions which have been raised we are constrained to hold that the proceedings conducted by the speaker on the disqualification application filed by shri b s yadurappa do not meet the twin tests of natural justice and fair play the speaker in our view proceeded in the matter as if he was required to meet the deadline set by the governor irrespective of whether in the process he was ignoring the constitutional norms set out in the tenth schedule to the constitution and the disqualification rules 1986 and in contravention of the basic principles that go hand in hand with the concept of fair hearing as we have earlier indicated even if disqualification rules are only directory in nature even then sufficient opportunity should have been given to the appellants to meet the allegation level against them and kindly now have my lords the last para 157 on same page the appeals are therefore allowed the order of the speaker dated 10 2010 disqualifying the appellants on the membership of the house under para 21a of the 10th schedule of the constitution is set aside along with the majority judgment delivered in writ petition so and so and the portions of the judgment delivered so and so concurring with the views expressed by honorable the chief justice upholding the decision of the speaker so and so filed by so and so consequently the dis disqualification application filed by bs yadurappa is dismissed so my lords a much worse case a case where the chief minister in question from the same party they say they have no faith but they said where have they said that they are leaving the political party they are forming a new political party they continue to support the party thus the extreme conclusion drawn to say that this ex facie attracts 21a is wrong because my lords if this is going to become the basis of 21a that i express dissent within the party then internal dissent which is the bedrock of democracy and parliamentary democracy will completely be thrown out of the window because at the end of the day the moment anyone within a party expresses dissent you say it's a 21a case so in a much worse case they said this is not a 21a case and my lords i am not for a minute suggesting as my lord the chief justice said yesterday my argument is not that the majority within a party cannot attract the ten schedule the majority within a party can also uh, uh, disobey a whip or for whatever reasons uh, floor cross or al align with the opposition party go to the governor for falling of the government that's not my case at all my case is that to determine who is the rival faction under para 15 of the symbols order there is an exclusive jurisdiction in the election commission of india which looks at the parameters as said by your lordships on sadiq ali downwards to see which is the rival faction within the political party to be recognized and my case right through has been that the legislature party and the political party go hand in hand you are today seeking to draw an artificial distinction between a legislature party and a political party to say that you have shown nothing in the political party you've only shown the legislature party whereas the legislature party definitely reflects the political authority of the political party as well in any case as far as a uh, 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 competent body is concerned it has come to a conclusion that we represent within the shiv sena the recognized shiv sena today so my case is not that a majority cannot incur under 21a my case is in the facts of the case for you to say this was only legislature party and not political party is without any basis in any case the speaker has to decide it you want to bypass the whole route and come to the supreme court in an article 32 and say the supreme court must decide before the speaker which is in the teeth of kyoto and my coming under a 32 was on nabam which is on an entirely different footing that was the argument next my lords kindly have volume 3d pdf 787 at at page 815 same 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 volume same volume i get that's right that's right calculate 787 yes huh? i get 787 i'm running against time in 20 but i only trouble your lodges with one para since there's less time para 19 page 815 Lodges may later see both the paras, nineteen and twenty, but I'll only read nineteen. My lords have nineteen. 
the constitution is not an ephemeral legal document embodying a set of legal rules for the passing hour it sets out principles for an expanding future and is intended to endure for ages to come and consequently to be adapted to the various crises of human affairs therefore a purposive rather than a strict literal approach to the interpretation should be adopted a constitutional provision must be construed not in a narrow and constricted sense but in a wide and liberal manner so as to anticipate and take account of changing conditions and purposes so that a constitutional provision does not get fossilized but remains flexible enough to meet the newly emerging problems and challenges the reason i'm citing this judgment my lords is in the context of nabam where it was said that the constitution doesn't provide as far as this when does the notice period start the constitution does not provide for it at all but some provision will have to be looked at if a situation emerges when the constitution was drafted and there was no tense schedule to it at that stage and a problem arises today why can the court not interpret it in a liberal manner to take care of the fact that the constitutional values are protected right my lords now please have uh, straight away of uh, wall Five six. Six fourteen. Nine forty six at nine fifty six. You're referring to the se separate con uh, volume. Uh, which Judgment one? Compilation volume. Judgment compilation two. volume two, serial number three. Nine forty six. Yes. Which is at nine fifty six, para fourteen. Is Kuldeep Nair? In in the in the meantime, starts with in the meantime, my lords. That's you you refer Kuldeep Bishnoi, my lords. Uh, oh, speaker sorry. Haryana Vidhan Sabha versus Kuldeep Bishnoi. Volume page? two. What page did you say, Mr. Uh, nine forty six. Forty six. nine forty six. The judgment starts. The para starts at nine five six. Yes. I'm sorry, I have the wrong volume. This give me one uh, judgment Dima, compilation. Dima, Dima judgment two. compilation two. two huh? It's serial number three judgment of what? Two. two judgment compilation volume two serial number three. This is Kuldeep Bishnoi. No? That's right. That's right. Nine forty six. It starts at nine. Oh, one second. Thank you. Simple. Want to Devinder Sil Devinder Pal Singh Bullar. It started huh? at serial number. Uh, it's part two. It's well, it's the bookmark fifty-two. Uh, bookmark fifty-two. Judgment Very important. Thank you. Three ninety. Nah, yes. Got it. Acha, acha, acha. Sorry, sorry. No, sorry. I, I, uh, my mistake. Three. It's fifty-two in the bookmarking, isn't it? Is it Deep Singh Bishnoi? Right. Twenty fifteen, twelve SCC three eight one. Yes. 
Unless even if I'm not legally sound, I'm trying to take sound technically correct by pointing out all the bookmarks. No, that's good. You're not just You're making progress. I'm inviting upon myself, you know. <laughs> Would you not just be kind enough to have para 14? Yes. In the meantime, proceedings before the speaker continued, and since the same were not being concluded in terms of the assurances given, the division bench of the High Court directed the speaker to file an affidavit on or before 11 11, 11 2011. Finally, being dissatisfied with the progress, the pending disqualification petitions before the speaker, the division bench tech took upon the letters patent appeals on 2-12-2011 when the directions are given to the production of the entire records of the matters pen pending before the speaker. On 7-12-2011, the relevant records of the proceedings before the speaker were submitted to the High Court, which adjourned the matter till 19-12-2011 for further consideration. However, as alleged on the uh, on behalf of the appellants, the bench was not constituted on 19-12-2011 and without any further hearing or giving an opportunity to the Speaker's counsel to make submissions on the status report, the High Court proceeded to pronounce its judgment on the letters patent appeals. By its judgment, which has been impugned in these proceedings, the division bench held the direction of the learned single judge directing the Speaker to decide the disqualification petitions within a period of four months. However, while disposing of the matter, the division bench stayed the operation of the order passed by the Speaker on the merger of the so it also declared five MLAs who have filed separate appeals before this court as being unattached members of the assembly with the right to attend the session only. It was directed that they would not be treated either as part of INC or NJC uh, party with a further direction that they would not hold any office either. It is a force of directions and orders which have resulted in the filing of several special leave petitions before this court by the speaker and five MLAs. As a consequence of the order of the speaker, pass, uh, uh, consequence of the order passed by the division bench of the high court, the five independent appellants before us have been prevented from discharging their functions as members of the Haryana Vidhan Sabha even before the disqualification petition filed against them by Sri Kuldeep Bishnoi could be heard and decided. Then para 46, my lords, on, on, uh, on page 965. Last para on that page, para 46. My lords have that? Mm. Uh, the appeal filed by the Speaker of the Haryana Vidhan Sabha against the judgment of the division bench of the High Court is not therefore capable of being sustained and the appeals filed by the Speaker is accordingly dismissed. The other appeals preferred by the five disqualified MLAs have therefore to be allowed to the extent of the directions given by the learned single judge and endorsed by the division bench that five MLAs would stand disqualified from effectively functioning as members of the Haryana Vidhan Sabha till the Speaker decided the petitions regarding their disqualification within a period of four months. In our view, the High Court has no jurisdiction to pass such an order, which was in the domain of the Speaker. The High Court assumed the jurisdiction which it never had in making the interim order, which had the effect of preventing five MLAs in question from effectively functioning as members of the Haryana Vidhan Sabha. The direction given by the learned single judge to the Speaker as endorsed by the division bench is therefore upheld to the extent that it directs the Speaker to decide the petitions or disqualification of the five MLAs within a period of four months. The said direction shall therefore be given effect to by the Speaker. The remaining portion of the order disqualifying the five MLAs from effectively functioning as members of the Haryana Vidhan Sabha is set aside. The said five MLAs would therefore be entitled to fully function as members of the Haryana Vidhan Sabha without any restrictions subject to the final de decision that may be rendered by the Speaker in the disqualification petitions filed under under para 6 of schedule 10 of the constitution. Now, my lords, this is of course the same principle as in continuation with Shivraj Singh Chauhan, which I had read out to your lordships. Yes. And there was a question that your lordships had put to me on the day before yesterday, that could someone say that Shiv Shara Chauhan was only on resignation. That's why I read out those paragraphs that Shivraj Singh Chauhan, your lordships don't just deal with resignation of MLAs. Your lordships categorically in paragraph 78 to 81 talk about disqualification petition under the 10th schedule and say if disqualification petitions under the 10th schedule are pending doesn't mean in the meantime they will stop discharging their functions as a member of the house. My next judgment for your lordships kind consideration my lords is Rajinder Rana. That would be Judge judgments compilation. Judgment, no my lords now on a point that I'm relying on. Okay. Till now I distinguished on what they were relying on. They were relying on it for two purposes, ex post facto and that your lodges as a court of first instance can decide. Ex post facto, I explained to your lodges saying that it was qua the speaker, that the events to be seen by him were on the day when they incurred disqualification, not subsequent events or split. 
and as far as your lordship deciding as a court of first instance was on an issue where it had been there in the high court for 3 years then the high court remanded it back when it came to the supreme court the supreme court said the assembly election the term is to expire by the end of the year so let's decide the matter that is quite different from this matter in every which way now my lords kindly have judgment compilation volume 1 bookmark bookmark 19 page 834 context of that exposed part these two these two para para 25 on page 855 Well, let's before I start, let me tell you, Lord, just the context why I am citing this judgment. Para twenty-five, PDF eight fifty-five. My Lord, the Chief Justice. Yes. Well, as the reason I am citing this judgment is that in this, at that time, Para three as a defence was available. At that time, even when Para three as a defence was available, the Supreme Court said. that the speaker de horse disqualification does not embark on an independent inquiry to find out about splits in the political party he only takes a limited prima facie view of the split within the political party the reason i'm citing is even when a this is not a question of split this is not a question of merger but even where it was a question of split and para 3 was still on the statute book the court said the speaker will not embark on an independent inquiry into splits in the political party please have para 25 for a minute my lords on page 855 it is only a jurisdictional fact for him to enter to give a finding with respect to disqualification grateful grateful that's all i couldn't have put it better that's all hello may i yes yes 25 in the context of the introduction of sub article 2 of article 102 and article 191 of the constitution a proceeding under the 10th schedule of the constitution is one to decide whether a member has become disqualified to hold his position as a member of the parliament or of the assembly on the ground of defection the 10th schedule cannot be read or construed independent of article 102 and 191 of the constitution and the object of those articles a defection is added as a disqualification and the 10th schedule contains the provisions as to disqualification on the ground of defection a proceeding under the 10th schedule gets started before the speaker only on a complaint being made that certain persons belonging to a political party had incurred disqualification on the ground of defection to meet the claim so raised the members of parliament or assembly against whom the proceedings are initiated have the right to show that there has been a split in the original political party and then they form one third of the members of the legislature party or that the party has merged with another political party and hence para 2 is not attracted on the scheme of article 102 and 191 of the 10th schedule the determination of the question of split or merger cannot be divorced from the motion before the speaker seeking a disqualification of a member or members concerned it is therefore not possible to accede to the argument that under the 10th schedule to the constitution the speaker has an independent power to decide that there has been a split or merger of a political party as contemplated by para 3 and 4 of the 10th schedule to the constitution the power to recognize a separate group in parliament or assembly may rest with the speaker on the basis of the rules of business of the house but this is different from saying that the power is available to him under the 10th schedule to the constitution independent of a claim being determined by him that a member or a member Uh, or a number of members had incurred disqualification by defection to that extent the decision of the speaker in the case on hand cannot be considered to be in order in terms of 10 schedule of the constitution the speaker has failed to decide the question he was called upon to decide by postponing a, de a decision thereon there is therefore some merit in the contention of the learned counsel for bsp that the other the other what uh, that the order of the speaker may not enjoy 
the full immunity in terms of para 6 sub clause 1 of the 10 scheduled to the constitution and that even if it did, the power of judicial review recognized by the court in Kehoto Holohon is sufficient to warrant interference with the order in question. In a sense, this aspect may not be of great importance in this case, since going by the stand adopted on behalf of 37 MLAs, the speaker was justified in keeping the petition seeking disqualification of 13 MLAs pending, even while he proceeded to accept a case of split in BSP. The question really is whether the speaker was justified in doing so. As we have indicated above, the whole proceeding under the 10 schedule to the constitution is initiated or gets initiated as a part of disqualification of a member of the house. That disqualification is by way of defection. The rules prescribed by various legislatures, uh, including the UP legislature, contemplate the making of an application to the speaker when there is a complaint that some member or members have voluntarily given up his membership or their membership in the party. It is only then that in terms of 10 schedule, the speaker is called upon to decide the question of disqualification raised before him in the context of para 6 of the 10 schedule. Independent of a claim that someone has to be disqualified, the scheme of the 10 schedule or the rules made thereunder do not contemplate the speaker embarking upon an independent inquiry. So as to um, uh, inquiry as to whether there has been a split in the political party or there has been a merger. Therefore, in the context of 102 and 191, the scheme of the 10 schedule to the constitution, we have no hesitation in holding that the speaker acts under the 10 schedule only on a claim of disqualification being made before him in terms of para 2 of the 10 schedule. And now, my lords, kindly read this with para 37, and then I'll come back to one more para I need to show. Please first have para 37. PDF page 862, my lords. That's the last of My lords have para 37. Yes. Thus, in the above decision, it has been clarified that it is not enough that a claim is made on a split in the original party, in addition to showing that one third of the members of the legislature party have become out of the party, but it is necessary to prove it at least prima facie. They say prima facie, yes, but all the time emphasizing on this whole thing that the speaker will embark upon a full-fledged inquiry into the political party, the talukas, the districts and decide on a split in a political party is without jurisdiction. Quite apart from the fact that you're seeking to draw an artificial distinction which does not exist. And I'll come to that judgment. That para of Sadiq Ali, I'll show to your lordships, which is important for this. Now, my lords, kindly have, only for that other issue of ex post facto, I'll just sum it up on para 34 of the same judgment. I just need to show that. Here comes the test. The test is here. Yes, yes. 860. That's right. 860. Para 34. My lords have that? Yes. Yeah. As we see it, the act of disqualification occurs on a member voluntarily giving up his membership of a political party or at the point of defiance of the whip issued to him. Therefore, the act that constitutes disqualification in terms of para 2 of the 10 schedule is the act of giving up or defiance of the whip. The fact that a decision in that regard may be taken in the case of voluntarily giving up by the speaker at a subsequent point of time cannot and does not postpone the incurring of disqualification by the act of the legislature. Similarly, the fact that the party could condone the defiance of a whip within 15 days or that the speaker takes decision only thereafter in those cases cannot also pitch the time of disqualification as anything other than the point at which the whip is defied. Therefore, in the background of the object sought to be achieved by the 52nd Amendment of the Constitution and on a true understanding of Para 2 of the 10th Schedule with reference to other paragraphs of the 10th Schedule, the position that emerges is that Speaker has to decide the question of disqualification with reference to the date on which the member voluntarily gives up his membership or defies the whip. It is really a decision ex post facto. It is in this connection that the observation is made that subsequent facts of split seeking a defense of split under the 10 schedule will not be looked at. You will see on the day you went to meet the governor in the facts of this case, some of the MLAs with the opposition party and asked the Samajwadi party to form the government was an act which was squarely hit by 2-1-A. And that is why, my lords, I respectfully submitted and read out instances of Ravi Nayak, 
of this judgment, they were overtaxed under 21A. <laughs> Yadurappa's judgment clearly says merely because within the party I say I do not support a particular coalition of a government is not a 21A case at all in the matter. In any case, my lords, who will decide it? Whether it's a 21A case or a 21P case, it still has to be the speaker under Para 6 who is the sole and exclusive constitutional authority to decide it. So A, I am not a 2-1-A case. B, Yadu Rappa is held mainly because you show support to a government is not a 2-1-A case. And thirdly, my lords, in facts of these cases, the facts which have to be seen are the facts on that date. The ex post facto is in that context. Ex post facto doesn't mean that since your disqualification will be decided on the date you incurred it, all your acts as members of parliament or members of the legislative assembly get annulled in the process. And that is the deduction sought to be drawn now from the words ex post facto in Rana's judgment. Now, my lords, kindly have, just last two judgments and I am done, kindly have Rameshwar Prashad versus Union of India. Same volume, bookmark 16, para 165. Uh, relevant para 165 is at page 521. What's the sorry, page? Page page. Page five twenty one. PDF page five twenty one. Uh, same same, same compilation. Same volume. PDF is three five twenty one. Eight. My lots have para one sixty five. May I, my lords? Yes. If a political party with the support of other political party or other MLAs takes a claim to form a government and satisfies the governor about its majority to form a stable government, the governor cannot refuse formation of the government and override the majority claim because his subjective assessment that the majority was cobbled by illegal and unethical means. No such power has been vested with the governor. Such a power would be against the democratic principles of majority rule. Governor is not an autocratic political ombudsman. If such power is vested in the governor or the president, the consequences can be horrendous. The ground of maladministration by a state government enjoying majority is not available for invoking power of 356. Remedy for corruption or similar ills or evil lies elsewhere and not in Article 356. In the same vein, it has all to be held that power under 10 schedule for defection lies with the Speaker of the House and not with the governor. The power exercised by the Speaker under the 10 schedule is of judicial nature. Dealing with question whether power of disqualification of members of the House vests exclusively with the House to the exclusion of the judiciary, which in Britain was based on certain practices of the legislature, as far as concerned, it was said in Kehoto. It is therefore inappropriate to claim that determinative jurisdiction of the Speaker or the Chairman of the 10 schedule is not a judicial power, is within the non-justiciable legislative area. So the reason I'm citing this judgment, my lord, is for the fact that for A, of course, we say that the chief minister lost his majority, couldn't, the coalition government could not survive, we within the party were the overwhelming majority, and even if their argument was to be accepted, which I am not conceding, that oh you cobbled it up together in an illegal mean etc, which it is not, it was a perfectly legitimate government which was sworn in, the governor is not to sit on these matters and make his assessments if a probable plausible coalition or partnership comes before it. And says, because ultimately at the end of the day, someone has to head a government, my lords. My lord, the Chief Justice posed a question to me yesterday. After the ch sitting Chief Minister resigns, someone has to be sworn in. Now, if a set of people come and show that they have a sizable or an overwhelming majority, he says, go and test it on the floor of the house. And what time does he give? Two days to do it. And your lodges have normally said those cases where you are given a month, two months, and that is... That is uh, scope for horse trading, etc. He immediately calls for a floor test in exercise of his constitutional duties and obligations. And say, prove your majority. If you are the new <coughs> government which is taking its claim within the same political party, now in coalition with another political party who is a pre-poll ally, what is wrong with that decision of the governor within two days? Now, my lords, kindly have lastly, Sade Kali for a completely different proposition. Volume 2, uh, Volume 2, 
बुकमार्क थर्टी नाइन एम वॉल्यूम पीडीएफ एट्टी फाइव एट नाइंटी एट कैन बी रिपीट दैट वॉल्यूम टू बुकमार्क थर्टी नाइन बुकमार्क थर्टी नाइन स्टार्ट्स एट पीडीएफ पेज एट्टी फाइव टू आह डी जजमेंट स्टार्ट्स एट पेज पीडीएफ एट्टी फाइव रेलेवेंट पैरा एट पीडीएफ रेलेवेंट पैरा एट पीडीएफ नाइंटी एट पैरा नाइंटी एट आह पैरा पैरा ट्वेंटी सेवेन पेज नाइंटी एट Well, as before I proceed to read, my lord the chief justice, can I? Before I proceed to read the judgment, my lord, the reason I'm citing it is I right through said, apart from all other arguments, that you cannot segregate the two. One of the principal arguments for recognition of a political party under six A and six B of the Symbols Order, those provisions I have not read, of six A and six B for a continued recognition. And recognition of a political party is the number of percentage of votes polled by MLAs, MPs. its strength in the house these are all relevant factors so what happens in the legislature can't be just kept aside that's a relevant consideration within it so to say that they are two completely distinct things and political party is distinct and legislature party is distinct is not correct and that is what sadik ali also notices in this paragraph is what i wanted to show it for the other paras my lords i am not bothering your lordships on all those powers of the ec because we are not getting into that uh, it may be mentioned that according to para 6 of the symbols order one of the factors which may be taken into account in treating a political party as a recognized political party is the number of seats secured by that party in the house of people or the state legislature uh, assembly or the number of votes polled by the contesting candidate set up by the such party the number of seats secured by a political party or the number of votes cast in favor candidate <clears throat> of a political party can be a relevant consideration for recognition of a political party one is at a loss to understand as to how number of seats in parliament state legislatures held by supporters of a group of political party can be considered to be irrelevant <clears throat> we can consequently discover no error in approach of the commission in applying the rule of majority and numerical strength for determining as to which of the two groups <clears throat> of um, congress j and congress o was the congress party for the purpose of para 15 of the symbols order now that is a separate matter which your lotches are dealing with where this has also become one of the considerations and this para of sadik ali in that other matter that your lotches are dealing with that this is one of the indicators valid indicators available so to come and say that you only done it in the legislature party there's nothing in the political party and there their entire argument my lords was with great respect that on 18th you had a meeting and you showed the minutes of 27th it's factually wrong i'll argue it there in that matter there are two separate meetings the factually incorrect statements made that you had a meeting on the 18 but there are no minutes there are no signatures that's not the subject matter of the reference before your lodges at all and i'll argue it there there are two separate meetings requisite members attended it and please do not confuse the minutes of one meeting with the holding of another meeting my lords i am very very grateful your lodges have been extremely thank kind you. and patient i am extremely you. grateful my lords and the three notes i've given yes. extremely great thank you mr we will now argue mr jetnani will argue you know, i am told mr salve has logged in so what we'll just make a brief submission first who is your parent <laughs> sir you are not audible sir Hear me now. Yes, Mr. Sarve. Yes. Well, not a short submission. I mean, Mr. Kaul has addressed your lordship on issues which perhaps don't arise really if your lordship sit back and consider. What is it that your court is called to decide today? I mean, we have answered everything on merits, but my lord, if your lordship take a step back and see what is it that your lordship need to decide. The first step in this entire saga. Mr. Was Salve appearing for whom? Mr. Salve, who do you appear for? Yes, I'll just give you a lot of the numbers. Please. Sorry, who are you appearing for? Yes, it's for the same, same set of parties. There are many yes. respondents. Yes, so different respondents. Yes, they all all same. Them. Another set of petitions. 
there we have to only distinguish the case with the governor because the governor will be uh, represented by uh, the solicitor. The solicitor. Yes. Plant is not in any place. Oh, no, uh, there is no confusion about whom I appear. And the, the rest of Mr. Call, Mr. Salve, Mr. Jetmani, Mr. We'll give appearances but for the individual uh, yeah, part. That's right. Sure. Yes. Then, uh, no problem. And Malad, the only thing I wanted to broadly respond to is Mr. Sibal's broad submissions about what role the court should take on to itself to prevent political immorality. But this is a very slippery slope. And your lordships have always resisted the temptation in certain areas to go beyond a particular point. Interpreting the 10th schedule undoubtedly will be inspired by the objects of the 10th schedule, namely to bring in a degree of political morality in public life. But beyond that, Malad, I would submit for the court to embark on this journey would be extremely perilous because there are very delicate balances between institutions involved here. Mr. Udav Thakare resigned. The governor called for a floor test of a sitting chief minister. There was no floor test held. The submission is if he had not called for the floor test and if this had happened and if that had happened, he would have won the floor test. A submission which our lordships should not even countenance for the reason. We do not know what happens in that part of the world when it comes to defending the majority of a chief minister. And my lord, it becomes even more perilous in today's day and today's world of coalition politics. How do you know who would have supported whom on that momentous day? What if one of his coalition partners had said, sorry, I can see that you've really lost the part of your party. We don't want to support you anymore. We don't know. And it is not for us to understand because these are matters beyond our understanding as lawyers. So, Malad, this entire submission that your lordship must assume a state of facts would have prevailed is extremely hazardous because this is in the realm, Malad, not of legal fiction. This is in the realm of the rough and tumble of politics. And I'm not suggesting any political immorality. Malad, why can it not be that two coalition partners say, we will not support you anymore. You've lost We've lost faith in your ability to steer the ship. We don't know whether that would have happened. Would it have happened? Would it not have happened? How can your lordships be invited to hazard that guess that if this had not happened, the but for test, which we call in, in our uh, in, in commercial law for breach, the but for test cannot apply here. Yes, if Mr. Thakre had contested the floor test if he had lost by 10 and your lordships felt 16 disqualifications were affected the court could have said we need to fix this problem because of our refusal to grant the test because your lordship said we will not stay the floor test we will make it subject to our judgment and your lordships would have been in a position to Correct what went wrong. Well, I know it's it's a much more mundane world in the in, in boardrooms and in company general meetings, but the principle is the same. Somebody says so and so should not be allowed to vote. Your lordship said count his vote separately and we'll see to what happens to the resolution. And the reason is Malad, suppose he had contested the floor test and lost by 70 votes. All this becomes academic. Yes. If they have defected, is the sin of defection purged? Maybe not. So, Marat, that's the first point which I wanted to make. It is, if that has happened, then if I am right there, that your lordship cannot and should not embark on any but for assumptions here. Because we do not know what would have happened on that fateful afternoon.
please my lord consider another scenario i am only giving these not because i am saying this would have happened i am saying this could have happened only to persuade your lordship not to go down this road let's let's take another scenario these 16 were guilty of overt and overt act they did not show up for a meeting somebody says that constitutes abandoning your party another 20 people may have done something by which you say they have done an overt act what do you know is lurking in the minds of others <laughs> look at what happened and i'm just to buttress this point but not look at what happened when chinde came for his floor test 13 of hardcore so-called supporters of Mr. Thakre abstained from voting, which basically meant it strengthened his hands. Now, these things happen in public life. How do you know how many more were not harboring the intention of walking away that day? So, Malad, these are all, all I'm saying is this is rank speculation as far as we are concerned. The, the politicians may feel that they knew what was going on. And we've had, and I'm just bringing it to your Lordship's notice, your Lordship know this. We've had a very strange situation in this very state, in this very formation, where one garment was sewn in, and within three days that garment fell, and another garment had to be sewn in. So, but these things happen. And the person who got sworn in as the Deputy Chief Minister with another formation became Deputy Chief Minister. These fast-moving political waters take different turns at different points we are not to speculate about them now if i am right there then that should be the end of the matter what is the speaker's constitutional obligation the general bomai principle which your lordship has been shown in para 395 of bomai is that, please, Mr. Speaker, do not do a mathematics. And Mr. Governor, please do not do this mathematics of but for. Call for the floor test. Let this be decided on the floor. Malad, when governors have sacked governments doing head counts, your lordships have taken him to task, saying you are failing in your job. Why? Because it is not for the governor to count heads. What Mr. Sibal and Dr. Singhvi are trying to do is persuading your lordships to count heads. Because unless you do a head count, your lordship must then come to the firm conclusion that the but for these, Udav Thakre would 100% have won. That's head counting. So, Malad, what your lordship said, the governor shouldn't embark upon now the judiciary is being asked to embark down that road. Nothing can be more perilous than that in my submission. Yes, we have a problem. We have a problem. We have the tenth schedule. Is the tenth schedule a perfect solution? No, it's not. It has its leaks. Parliament is... Uh, when. The legislature sometimes tries to fix it. Sometimes there are conflicting interests. It is not fixed. Malad, the biggest example we have of criminalization in politics. We have had this problem all the while. We have problems about election donations. We have problems about election funding. We have problems about election spending. These are all problems, Malad. We can't cross beyond a point. So, Malad, first of all, I submit the first set of cases don't arise then comes the second situation what did the governor do he is left in Maharashtra without a chief minister if he is left in Maharashtra without chief minister he has to invite somebody to form the government now he had then two options he has invited Mr. Shinde to form the government should he have not allowed Shinde to continue without a floor test? That would have been worse than conducting a floor, floor test. <laughs> where are we in this case? Everything is academic. Yes, 
The only thing which remains is the 36 pending disqualification petition which the speaker will decide. And if he gets them wrong, there is the high court which will correct them. Your lordships are here which will correct them. Yes. Within the parameters of the judicial review, your lordships have tested and corrected these orders time and again. That is my lord, my first submission. My second submission. is what happens pending the disqualification petitions. Your Lordship has been shown the judgments, but let's, my Lord, sometimes it helps. Let's go back on first principles. Please see two provisions of the Constitution, my Lord, and whether your, your Lordships find the answer there. 190. Yeah, we've seen that actually. Your Lordship has seen it. We've seen it. Correct, Madam. The point which I wanted to make is just show your Lordship something in the language of 190. Just for two minutes. 190 is Parliament. We are more concerned about uh, 180. Is that? 69. <laughs> the language is identical. I mean, identical. Correct. Yes, there's no. The principle. Of the two is very important. Let's see the uh, compare the equivalent uh, provisions. Once first see 173. These are qualifications. Person not qualified to fill a seat. I don't need to trouble your with the details. And then we come to 190, which is houses of the state of legislature. So we are really concerned with 190 because we are talking about state. And 190 sub article 2 tells your lordships no person shall be a member of two or more specified, then after the expiration of the period, etc. We are not concerned because. We are really concerned with sub article 3. A becomes subject to any of the disqualifications in 1 or 2 of 19 uh, of 191. So we might not go to 191. 191 applies to at both stages for being chosen and as for being a member. B, C are post occurrence of events. Unsound mind and stand so declared by a competent court. A, a pendency of a petition in a court to declare somebody incompetent is not good enough. A in pending insolvency is not good enough. Look at E normal. If he is not so disqualified by or an, under any law made by parliament. Now, Malad, today your lordship was told eloquently of how terrible it is to allow those hit by 10 schedule to continue. Malad, it is not every time that there is corruption because of which there is defection. There may be times where people may defy a whip. There may be time when there may be a split in a political party. Now that sub article 3 has gone, you have a problem. And people may say we will brave disqualification, but this chief minister has to go. But look at my lord, the representation of people act. You may have a person who's elected on which there are allegations of booth capturing, of violence. I remember my lord once somebody was arguing the case for one of the persons from Bihar, my lord, who was in jail and saying he should be allowed to come, Mr. Tulsi was arguing and he told Justice Nanavati, he said, see the majority by which my client has won the election. And Justice Nanavati said, if your client had his way, he would have had no op opponent. <laughs> he would have killed all of them. 
Samarat, those kind of cases are pending. A person, Malad, a, a known mafia king, against whom there was a murder trial pending for publicly gunning down people, continued in office. Where does it? My Lord, we have cases and your lordships have dealt with these cases in the high court and sometimes in appeal in this court. You have cases of the worst kind of electoral offenses pending for trial. What happens to those people? They continue in office. So my Lord, there is nothing so shocking that in our system, many times people continue in office where there are serious allegations pending against them. That's the bane of our system. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, with that, may not see the language of 191.2. A person shall not shall be disqualified for being a member if he is so disqualified under the 10th schedule. So that disqualification must take place. And that disqualification in the 10th schedule does not take place. until there is a decision of the chairman or the speaker under paragraph 6. Any other view, my lord, would be equally or would be far more disastrous because today all you have to do then paralyze to paralyze the working of an assembly is to file disqualification petitions. Uh, Mr. Salve. Yes. Till here there is no problem. Yes. The position under the constitution is very clear. Yes. Uh, and also the judgments of this court. Correct. Concluded with this expression, the decision. Yes. The problem arises, the time, context, and the stage at which speakers choose to take a decision. Yep. I'm, I was going to straight away address, but yeah. Yes. I mean, in yes. that, yes. it is in that context that Yes. Either, Amalad, that I... he, either that he shows over anxiety to immediately decide violating principles of natural justice or he just doesn't decide for times to come. Amalad, so, the short the answer of pending 10th yes. schedule proceedings, yes. the powers to be exercised either by the governor or the political process as it were goes on. Yes. So makes the application redundant many Malad, a time. May, may I, may I, Malad, respectfully Please answer? Order. This has been the biggest problem of appointing a speaker. Mr. Sibal was right when he said, Your Lordships express hope and faith that the institution of the speaker will rise above politics when it comes to the 10th schedule. Our experience may not have fully risen up to those expectations. But that's where we have to drop that. The point, my lord, is this.
Yes. But not the respectfully answering just in Narasimha's question. If your lordship has seen the rules here have in one sense a constitutional status because the rules are framed as a delegate under paragraph 8. And those rules can and should provide a time frame in which these petitions have to be decided, both giving fair opportunity. So it, these rules normally say you will give so much time for giving a reply. One of the reasons why our group came to court is even that time was not given. And equally, perhaps its time has come for the rules to say, if a petition is filed, he shall, unless there are compelling reasons to the contrary, dispose it off in 90 days or 60 days or something like that. And there, Malad, then judicial review will come in. If a speaker is dragging his feet and the rules say he must decide it, absent compelling uh, reasons within a given frame of time, judicial review will come in. You can go to a high court and say, is your writ of mandamus directing him to dispose of? Because then you will have a, you will have a legal right to ask for a decision within a given time. So, my Lord, these are the only ways in which your lordships can address this lacuna. Now, what is the relating back? Relating back has two dimensions. The event has taken place. So ultimately, the subsequent events will not affect. It will not FS. The wrong which you have committed, the political wrong which you have committed, which disqualifies you, it's over. Not if, you, if you enter into an office of profit, you are disqualified. If you resign three months later 